Okay, in this video, I wanted to show you some pictures that people have sent me. Uh, the picture you're looking at is from Sood. Uh, the, the plenum is three to four inches thick, including plenum size of 0.75 inches, three quarters of an inch. Um, he wanted to know if this looked good. So the pictures you are looking at, uh, yes, it looks quite good and nice and how his plenum looks so you can get an idea that the substrate you use is entirely up to you. In this video I'm going to show you examples of tests. Okay, so you can see exactly what is happening when you feed your animals or you overfeed them or change your routine of the tank and we're, I'm going to show you some tests that were sent to me by a hobbyist. So stay tuned. Okay, the first photograph is from Ka, and he's from Vietnam. So he sent me a lot of uh, photographs like this. And these are all photos of his aquarium that he's been testing with a uh, redox meter and he got a phosphate meter from Hannah. And as you can see in the different tests he's showing here, all his redox is over 334, 329, over 300. And that's all using the anoxic filtration system. In these photos, he's showing all the different tests of nitrates, and ammonia and everything in his aquarium and he also gives the dates to let you see what is going on with his uh, anoxic filtration system in his aquarium which I think is very interesting on his uh, nitrates and phosphates and he also sent me a lot of photographs of what his phosphates are if you look at all his tests everything's coming out quite well, uh, aquarium is phosphates are 0.08 in this particular test. He uh, is showing his ammonia and trying to uh, give us all a hint of his redox. Uh, it looks like 334, quite high for the aquarium. I mean, I'm showing you these, these tests right from a hobbyist. So you can see what the anoxic filtration does, how it tests out. And this is uh, very good that they, he sent me all these tests so you can see somebody else's results from using the anoxic filtration system. In this, you see different phosphates reading with the HANA test kit. And as you notice, his phosphates are very low, the same as what you would get in a saltwater aquarium. But any time the phosphates have went up, he makes the indication that he has fed his fish more food on that particular time. And then when he tests it out as phosphates, they have risen. So here's proof that when you're feeding your fish foods and you think that particular food will not affect your aquarium, and you wonder why you're getting algae. This is the reason why. Because foods carry nitrates and phosphates in them. And this, in turn, can turn your aquarium full of algae problems. And you may not think, hey, why is this happening? I don't understand. Well, here's proof where he's showing that uh, 40 to 50 grams a day after one day it raised from 0 0.02 to 0 0.13 that's the last photo you see in this setup six photos in just one day the phosphates rose that much now you can imagine if you did this every single day and kept it up not thinking that phosphate levels would be rising and this is the case where hobbies are telling other hobbies well, plants need phosphates, but they need phosphates in micro 
amounts, not in macro amounts. And as you can see from his test, it takes very little to upset that equilibrium that's in your aquarium, that balance of the biotope that's in your aquarium by just feeding a little more food and not realizing that you're raising your phosphate levels and even though your nitrate levels, you may say, well, my nitrates are low. Why am I getting algae? Well, look at this. This kind of shows you that just feeding a little more phosphate levels can rise. And we know that the phosphates are going to determine the algae that's going to be in your aquarium. And with a little change of food and how much he's feeding, you can see the difference in his phosphate levels. And we know that it's 7 to 1 ratio. So now if you raise your phosphates and it's 0.13, now you can figure out what your nitrates are going to be to all of a sudden cause a problem. And if you continually do this, okay, day after day, you start getting algae problems or you start getting uh, other problems with your aquarium that you are thinking to yourself, what did I do wrong? How come it went out of kilter? And this is the, the reason why. Little things can cause big problems that you're not really prepared for. And I think this is a good example where each time his phosphate levels rose, he increased the amount of food he fed his fish. 0 0.27, 0 0.13. He increased the amount. So yeah, I guess you can understand why in a lot of videos you see people they don't want to feed their fish except maybe once every other day, once every three days. This is the reason why they're so scared of getting algae and upsetting things that their aquarium can't handle it. And then they eventually get algae. And, of course, we see on the video that uh, they, they'll turn around and say, oh, I'm going to take this tank down because I neglected it a little bit. We've all seen those videos. And how come everybody seems to have to take their tank down because they neglected it a little bit? You know, is it a coincidence? I don't know. But anyhow, I did want to show you this because I thought it was quite interesting. So you could see yourself that even if you don't have these test kits, remember, the more you feed, the more your filtration system has to handle what you are doing, the pollution that's coming in the aquarium. And like I said, with goldfish, some of these pollutions that you think should not affect the fish do affect the fish in the long run and in the long term. Just because they're not showing stress immediately, they may show stress in the future. And trying to keep goldfish especially I have not been successful unless I used an anoxic filtration system or BCB baskets. Otherwise, my success, success rate was poor. And I admit it. But I believe, I believe I'm not the only one out there who had such bad success with goldfish. It's just that we're not being told how uh, the success rate is with goldfish and how bad it is that I think uh, more of those animals are being lost than what people want to admit to by not using the correct filtration system. Anyway, eliminating nitrates, eliminating phosphates, using an anoxic filtration system, using BCB basket to me is a must. You must get your water quality under control. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching.